Hi friends, Jane from the Bolt Quilt Shop here, Monroe, Connecticut. And today is Saturday, April 4th. I hope you're all doing okay, that you're feeling good, and that you have been happily sewing along, considering the circumstances. I hope you like my shirt. It's a um, Life is Good shirt, and a friend of mine gifted it to me, and I have to say it makes me smile, so I wanted to share it with you today, too. Um, okay, so I have been making scrub caps lined with ties, and I um, apologize for the delay in getting this up, but I ended up writing a pattern. You're going to be seeing the tutorial in a couple of minutes, and um, the templates are free, downloadable, with the addendum or supplement that you will find on our website, um, on our blog. And if you go to our Facebook page, it is on the About section under the menu, the public menus, because that's how my source said the only way I can upload a PDF um, to our Facebook page. Uh, so before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to go over a few things. As I mentioned before, the templates and the um, supplement can be found at www.theboltquiltshop.com. They're free and um, make sure that you print them out. Uh, it should be the actual size, which is, and there's a little one inch uh, scale on there. The scrub cap itself is lined. It has the tie in the back. It has an optional elastic band that you can make the pattern with or without. And, and it sews up pretty quickly. So it's, I hope that you enjoy it. My priority was to get this pattern out to you. So there are some additional enhancements and finishings that I did not include in this because I knew that time was of the essence. But I still think it works up really nicely and I hope you do too. With garment construction, you wanna use a good poly thread because poly is very strong and since this Scrub cap will be washed and laundered, um, sanitized, etc. It's really important to use that sort of a thread. The other thing is, uh, I am figuring that the hospitals are going to want the same tightly woven fabric. So in my sample, I am showing you a batik main fabric and a batik lining, which is just the white batik. And figuring that should work well because they are such tightly woven fabrics. The other one that is possible to use and is lightweight is a Tana lawn, which, also, which has a very tight weave as well. I have no information from the hospitals regarding what their requirements are at this time because this is also somewhat new for them and so I am basing my information on what I received from them with the masks. The other thing is using a sharp needle. I'm using an Oregon 12 or 14 for these. So on to the scrub cap. The yardage that's required for this is a third of a yard for your main fabric, which covers the outer band, the outer band, and the top of the cap, and then your lining which requires a quarter of a yard of fabric. If, and that's for non-directional fabrics. If you're using directional fabrics, 
then you're going to need a little bit more than a third of a yard because when you cut out your cap top, you want to make sure that it's reading properly and that it's not reading sideways. You can include approximately three and a half inch long piece of elastic. The one that I used is a half an inch wide. And again, that's an option. So you don't need the elastic to make a nice mask using this pattern. Your seam allowances are all three eighths of an inch, unless it's noted otherwise in the tutorial. And when I press, which I'll mention in the tutorial, I use a dry iron. I do not use any steam. It's just strictly a hot dry iron. The supplies that you'll need are your basic sewing supplies. You can use either clips, the little clips, or pins you'll need. And I happen to use a fine silk pin for these. Um, let's see, where is it? A safety pin, and this will be for pulling your elastic through. I love these reverse tweezers. This is what I love to use when I'm doing the ties and I'm making them right side out because this you can grab the fabric at the bottom here and then I put my finger in to in between the handles to make sure that the fabric isn't going anyplace and then I just pull it out. And so this is a great tool for um, turning things right side out. To get the good points, I um, you can use a skewer, anything with um, some sort of an edge to it so you can work it up. Um, I happen to have this stiletto which has a little tool on the other side too and I just like to run that through uh, to, get, to get the nice finished edge. There may be other tools that I mentioned throughout the video. So I apologize if I don't have them at this point, um, but I will definitely address them in the video if I'm missing anything here now. So the next thing I want to talk about is your pattern prep. What you're going to do is print the three pages of your pattern pieces. And you want to make sure that you're printing them out at 100%. There is a little scale on each of the pages, a one inch scale, to make sure that your printer is printing properly. And you're going to rough cut the, the three pages out. For the band piece, there's three different parts to it. And so what I have done is very clearly labeled them as band one, band two, and band three. And then on each of the pieces made hash marks and telling you which piece belongs there. So you're going to rough cut these, tape them together in the order that they go, and then you're going to need Manila folders. If you have legal size, that's great. If you don't, no worries. You can use regular letter size ones. You'll just need to open them up and uh, tape some together. The cap top pattern piece will, fold, will go nicely on one half of your Manila folder. And then once you glue stick that down, you'll be able to just fine trim it out. For your band template, you're going to need to tape, as I mentioned, the folders together and 
then you will um, finely cut that out as well. This is similar to what you did with the mask pattern if you watched our tutorial. We're going to talk about the fabric. Going to take your pieces of fabric, both the third of a yard and the quarter of a yard, and you're going to fold it this way. Your raw edges will match. You have your fold here, and you're going to take your completed band piece, which says on there, place on fold on the bottom. There. You're going to put that along the fold. And you're going to trace it out. Make sure that you include your markings, that you transfer them onto your fabric. That's really important because these are going to tell you where to sew, where to attach things and such. So you're going to cut that piece out and then with your leftover excess, you're going to fold it again and you're going to place, unfold this straight edge of your cap top and then you're going to trace around that. Again, transfer all of your markings. So this is your center front. Then here you have a dot, here you have a dot, and then you're also going to transfer your um, fold lines as well. And this bottom part here is for your elastic placement. I think that pretty much covers it for our supplies and for our prep work. And now comes the fun part of the sewing. The first thing you're going to do is take your cap top fabric and press on that 3 eighths of an inch marking. You're then going to press and fold in on the remaining 3 quarters of an inch marking. And then you're going to stitch along the bottom edge and along the top edge. This is going to be creating the channel for the elastic if you wish to incorporate a little elastic band. It's not necessary for this fabric, but the demo that I am doing is going to be including this, and um, this is an optional step. The next thing you're going to do on your cap top fabric is based along the markings on the curved edges of it. You would have transferred these markings when you traced your pattern out onto your fabric and there's a set of dots on both sides of the cap top. Using a basting stitch of anywhere between like a 4 and a 5, you're going to do a narrower seam allowance than your typical 3 eighths of an inch. I like to use about an eighth to a quarter inch seam allowance when I'm basting. The next step is to take the band main fabric and lining and pin them together at the markings that you transferred over from the template. You're going to pin starting at one marking down along the tie 
straight along the bottom, then back across the tie and finish with a pin at the marking on the other side. We are not going to pin nor sew this long curved edge at this time. That's where the cap is going to attach to. And I am choosing to pin, even though this is a straight line, because this fabric is cut on the cross grain across the width of the fabric, and so there's more stretch in there. So I'm pinning to hold on to the stretch. And I am using a fine pin for this. Making sure that my stitch length is back at a standard stitch length, which I like to do about a two, a little bit over. Remember we're stitching a three-eighths of an inch seam allowance. And we're going to start at one marking. I am going to lock stitch as well. And here we go. One other thing that I want to mention when pinning is you always want to pin with the head of the pin to the outside and the sharp point going in towards the fabric because this keeps the fabric from moving. If you had it pinned this way, your fabric could very easily shift. Readjust your fabrics as necessary. And again, lock stitching at the other marking. What we're going to do next on this is trim our corners at the ties and then I'm also going to have you grade the seam allowance along the tie. What this is going to do is minimize the bulk when we turn it over because that uh, will be our next step. So that's what it's going to look like. And you're going to do that for the other tie as well. You're clipping your corners. You're not getting too close so that you are um, endangering the integrity of your seam allowance or your stitches, but you are absolutely minimizing the bulk in this way. Before you turn your cap band right side out, you're going to clip into the seam allowance at the two markings where you started and stopped sewing. Right. And so now, using your preferred method, you're going to open this up, turn your seam, your um, cap band right side out. And what I actually like to use with this is you can use um, a safety pin or whatnot, but I like to use these reverse tweezers because they'll allow me to clamp onto an edge. And then I can um, just finish poking it through. And so you'll do this on both of the tie ends. I think there's a little bit more to this one than I originally thought. 
There we go. Um, you'll do this to both of them and press it. Out. Once you have your band right side out and pressed, we're going to do a top stitch. I just want to note that I did not clip into this curved seam because I am not getting any puckering. For myself, it is a mild um, curve and you are welcome to clip into it if you want, but I just wanted to address that that's why I did not. So we're going to top stitch along the ties, the bottom, and then across the other tie. It will be um, where the markings were, and you can use your clipping as your guide. For my top stitch, I am just going close to the edge and um, at a regular stitch length. Next step is just basting along this top edge that we left open on the band cap. We're just securing the two layers together before we attach the cap top. And I'm using a larger stitch on this. I'm going at about a four. And I have pinned it. My seam allowance is about an eighth of an inch. And it's just, I'm just sewing this to keep the two layers together. And again, I'm using my clipped edges as my guide where I am sewing to start and to end. If you want to include elastic, I suggest using a half inch wide, and I've cut mine three and a half inches long. I've taken my cap top piece that already has the edge stitching on the hem and marked in an inch from each edge. So measuring an inch and then marking it. And that way I know that that's where I'm going to sew when I insert my elastic. So what I'm doing is one end of the elastic, which I use a pinking shears on, by the way, when I cut it. It's inside. I left a tail about three-eighths of an inch, maybe a, yeah, three-eighths of an inch, beyond the mark so it's going to get caught in my seam when I sew it. My stitch is a regular stitch size and I'm going to go up and down a few times to secure the elastic. You can also do a little box stitch if you want. Anything um, as long as you're securing that elastic is fine. Okay. 
And then again, it's going to be a little bit beyond that mark. So you can see there's a little bit of elastic gathering. I'm just making sure that I'm getting it beyond. And then I'm just going to sew it right there. It's a little bit trickier because you don't actually see the elastic end. But it's going to give a very nice finish. And now I'm going to remove the safety pin. And so now this is how you've incorporated your elastic into the cap. And again, this is not required. It's optional with the way that the pattern is designed. The next step is putting both of the pieces together. So taking your band and your cap top, you're going to pin them. You can use the red clips if you'd like, but in the case of these pretty intense curves, I personally like to use a fine pin. The first place you're going to pin is at your center top, which you would have marked on your pattern pieces. And then the next points are going to be where your clip is, and your cap top hem. You're going to do that on both sides. And then you're going to start dissecting the cap. So you can put pins in at the quarter and keep on making it smaller. You will need to kind of play with the fabric to get it in. Curves are tricky in that respect. So it's similar if you've done garment sewing, it's similar the way that you would insert a sleeve. I do have straight edge stitching from the hem up until the mark where we made our basting stitch. And then that's going to be curved. There is about um, a little bit less than two inches of straight stitching by your center top and then it goes into curve again. And then there is the straight edge stitching from the bottom of your basting until the hem of your cap. So I'm going to stitch around this using a regular size stitch closer to the um, shorter end. So it's just about um, a two. And I'm going to take this stitching slowly because there is a lot of curve. We're doing a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And if you find that one of your parts is larger than the other, you want to have the larger part face down so that that part is sewing along your feed dogs. And here it goes. Remember, 3 eighths of an inch, and we're going to reinforce the beginning and ending of the stitching, meaning lock stitching it. Make sure that it's not getting tucked or tangled in your seam allowance. Worst case scenario, if it does, you can always just unstitch it or, you know, tear it out with your seam ripper. And so you can see I'm manipulating the fabric a lot. My thumb is on the underside feeding the fabric as well as my fingers from the top. And always, 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 my fingers are not near the needle. And don't worry about it being perfect because we're not looking for perfection for this project.
So now what you'll want to do is press this out and I will be clipping into some of the curves because it's again it's a very tight um, line of curve and we want to make it as comfortable and as easy as possible. So I'm clipping in here, I'm clipping in here, over there, we'll get a little bit right there. Yep, see it's telling me do it here, here. There. There. And then once this is pressed, what we are going to do is um, you can either, with a pinking shear, um, finish off this edge, or I'm going to take it to the um, other sewing machine and run a zigzag stitch along the along this area right here. I know I had mentioned in the last step that I was going to now finish off with a zigzag stitch around the cap head. But after taking a closer look at the batik, I feel that the zigzag stitch would be unnecessary since it is such a tight weave and it finishes off pretty nicely. Um, if you're using a regular woven fabric, then I would say to um, finish it off with a zigzag stitch if you'd like. What I decided to do is to once again grade the seam allowance. So I am trimming away about an eighth of an inch from the um, the band which had the two layers, the lining and the uh, main fabric. And I am leaving the seam allowance for the cap top alone. And so I trimmed away this whole piece from that part and it was from the seam allowance that we had just stitched from attaching the cap top to the band. So this is what the seam allowance looks like once I have graded it. And I did that around the whole thing. I will go ahead and press it. And then what we're going to do is come back to the machine and pressing the main fabric to the side of the lining, we're going to top stitch now so that this seam that we just sewed is going to be sewn onto the band fabric lining, the band lining. It's a little bit awkward to say, but I think you'll get a better idea of it once you see me. So I'm going to press this. I am ready to stitch. Here is the tie. Here's the other tie, just for your orientation. And I am going to be stitching, top stitching, about an eighth of an inch away from the seam where the cap, top, and the lining meet. I have just pressed it, and as a side note, I use a dry iron when I press. I do not use steam. Um, I find that steam can distort or stretch the fabric when I just want to simply press. So I um, just use a dry, hot iron. Okay, I have my regular stitch, and I'm going to lock stitch, and... 
I am just going to sew with my thumb on the underside, guiding the fabric. So the seam is on the side where the lining is. Again, take your time doing this. There's a lot of start and stop. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect. So don't worry about that. You do want to do the best that you can, um, like with anything. But don't worry about perfection. And what will happen, you'll find, is that our top stitching from earlier on matches up very nicely with this top stitching. So you can just have it flow from one right into another. The area where the tie meets the cap and the elastic is right here, just as a reference point, this is a stress point. And so what I'd like to do is sew a reinforcement stitch here, and we can actually do it as a small box shape reinforcement. And you can work it either from the top or from the um, inside, whichever you prefer. And we're just going to do very, very simple. And you can actually do it a couple of times if you'd like. But what it does is because this is where the tie meets the cap, it's got, it gets a lot of use in a voyeur. And that's it on the inside. So you'll do that on the other side as well. And that's just reinforcing that area where the tie is used. And so we'll go ahead and do it on this side as well. That is the top stitching that we just did. On the inside, aside from a few stray strings, it looks quite nice. And so you can just give it a pressing, and then this is the finished project. Thanks again for watching our lined tieback scrub cap tutorial. Remember to grab your supplement from our website, www.theboltquiltshop.com. If you're looking for supplies or if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Always happy to help. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Be well. Happy stitching. So on. And... What you're doing makes a difference and is truly appreciated. Bye-bye for now.